startled by the sound of slam, slam, slam. I froze. I was certain it was someone shouldering in my front door. Welcome to My Empower Project with your host, Erin Rowe. We will discuss nutrition, fitness, becoming your own boss, and just becoming better every day. I invite you to join My Empower Project as we embark, embrace, encompass, and enlighten. Welcome back. I have some unique interviews in the upcoming months for you with a new episode every Tuesday as usual, but I want to explain why I had to go away for a little while. I grew up with two dogs, an old English sheepdog as tall as me named Reggie and a white poodle terrier mix called Max till I was five and I remember playing with them in my play kitchen in the playroom while they hung out in there with me. Then one day a Yorkshire Terrier puppy came running through the house. I was six years old and named him Ruff. The next year in second grade my class walked to the library each week and we checked out a book. The girls all read the Bobsy Twins but I went to the shelf on the right every single time and I'd check out the red book with worn out gray block print letters, dog training, every single week. I grew up with Ruff, he was part of my whole childhood, and he even came to help me move into college 900 miles away. I'll insert some photos on my website, erinrow.com, of him in my dorm room. Ruff waited until I got home for Christmas the following year to say goodbye. In the years following, I brought my parents a dachshund when I traveled home to visit them twice. First Brody, who is now 15, next came Jersey. I'd walked into the house with my new red coach purse with Jersey inside poking his head out. After graduation and a couple years after renting with no dog policies, I finally began my search to save and have my own dog. I visited pounds and shelters, and one day I applied for a dog named Lucky, and I got rejected. And I did so many times thereafter because I worked full time, so I wasn't approved to leave a dog home alone that long. I must have been working at the dog groomer at the time. My boss invited me to the Westminster Dog Show in the city in Manhattan, and I was watching, and this big black bearded dog stood up on his hind legs like a bear and rested his paw on his owner's shoulders like a human hug. I turned to my boss and said, what is that? She said, a giant schnauzer. Time went on and I found a dog in the paper. I got time off work, which was an ordeal because I was a contractor and didn't get any paid vacation at the time. And the lady canceled on me. It was a Great Dane. I had applied for Great Danes and I didn't have a fence. And so I started fostering them, but I wanted my own. So many disappointments later, I applied to be on a TV show. I talked to an executive based out of California. He told me that they would help someone find their ideal dog, and I wanted a great date. He told me to send an audition tape. The quality was so bad. I think I used Microsoft Paint for the graphics at the time. Then summer came. I finally got approved by a rescue group called 11th Hour Rescue, located in Rockaway, New Jersey. Yes, if you're on my Facebook, it's the same group that I help raise money for in Lily's honor. I had friends donate $11 each just because she was almost 11 and the name is 11th hour rescue and I'm still taking donations I bought my first house and was getting settled in I'm living alone for the first time three months in and I'm awoken startled by the sound of slam 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 I froze with my eyes wider than ever to pinpoint exactly where the sound was coming from I was certain it was someone shouldering in my front door on the floor below me it's like 6 a.m., so I ran to the bathroom off my bedroom and I closed the door. My flip phone was downstairs at the time. It was 2008. I'm standing in my bathroom holding a razor from my shower for protection and just shaking. The slamming continued, so I thought I have to jump out this window. The door had no lock and I was cornered in this tiny bathroom. I was thinking, how do I jump and not roll my ankle, jumping two stories? As I opened the window, I froze. There was another man in a hoodie at the corner of my house, watching guard, I thought as the other one was slamming his way in. I couldn't go anywhere, and then it all stopped. The man disappeared, so I ran downstairs. Apparently, 
Someone who had worked on my house months earlier wanted to finish fixing a light up by my gutter and the ladder was stuck and they were trying to move it against the house on the wall of my bedroom. I was so scared to go to sleep alone again. I sat down and typed one more time petfinder.com and I saw it. The post read giant schnauzer mix two sisters available at this Saturday's adoption day. The two girls were found roaming the streets as strays in Georgia and were taken in by a shelter down there. 11th hour rescued them hours before they were to be euthanized. So I called to make sure the GS's, giant schnauzers, would be there and was told they would be driven up from Georgia that Thursday before by two volunteers, Cool Karen and Fast Eddie, who would be bringing a load of 17 dogs. They'd be getting a bath on Friday, spending another night in the shelter, and then hopefully adopted on Saturday. I remember waking up, throwing on any old clothes as quickly as I could to get to that adoption day before someone else rescued them. I actually was going to see the sister Sally, the one of the two that loved to fetch tennis balls and loved to please people. I looked around and to my left were two black puppies in cages. Sally had no interest whatsoever in leaving her crate. Lily was to her left, full of excitement. So they put a red leash on her and handed her over. We walked around the store and I knelt down and she placed her paws on my knees to be eye level and looked at me and we were meant to be. I think they switched their personality descriptions. She was so content. She curled up in the sweetest little ball on my back seat. Miss Lily was my new baby girl and little did I know she was made just for me. I actually got a call that I was chosen to be on the show a week later, but I had my dog. Lily was brought to her new forever home. She was a handful and the wildest one in her obedience class. That breed needs extra effort. They are resilient, persistent, and too smart for their own good. We understood each other more so because my trainer from obedience school taught us basic commands yet also to train through body language. Lily was a wild girl, and I trained her through words and body language. This is how we communicated. Every motion we each did told each other what we wanted and needed. She even alerted me that a package had been delivered to the door when she could no longer stand. Lily and I experienced living on the lake. We lived alone together in that house for nine and a half years. After that, we lived with family for a year, which actually was the first place I stopped on the way home from adopting her. And I told my family to go out to the front porch because I had a surprise. On the lake, I ended up buying her a kayak. And it was a long search to choose one that she could stand on comfortably. People around the lake would come out onto their decks and watch us because we were a sight to be seen. With me yelling because she was trying to jump off and go after lake creatures, I'd have to try to pull her back on without tipping over. One time, she smelled hamburgers and ran up onto somebody's deck to their grill and I'm still paddling quickly trying to reach her. And then there's the time I taught her not to be afraid to jump off of the dock. Even on just a chill night, I'd say, want to go swimming? And she'd stand by the door ready. I'd throw her a float toy and she'd lunge off the rocks into the lake to retrieve it and stop to bite lily pads on the way back to shore. My water dog loved the water as much as she loved hikes. I pretended I was a runner so she could exercise in the winter and I bought her a treadmill. She and I ended up running on it together and I'll put some photos of our adventures too. She loved hiking, my adventure girl. We'd go and hike in the woods. When she got the zoomies during a hike, my cousin and aunt and I would give a cue and all hide behind the nearest tree because she'd come barreling at the front of our knees during her zoomies and we wanted to steer clear of her path until she was ready to walk with us again and stop for a swim in either the reservoir or the stream. She loved the small hikes and just the car rides to our hikes. She taught me a lot of things, but living in the present was one of the biggest lessons I learned from her. Lily and I were inseparable, really. All my boyfriends that followed after knew we were a package deal. I'd show up at their apartment, their townhouse, and they'd look to the left to see if she was with me too. Us girls had a bond, and Lily's adventures didn't stop there. Our best trips were to the beach. I would drive her nine hours just to get a private spot so I could let her run into the bay and the ocean off leash with no one around us. I drive just her and I to the Outer Banks of North Carolina solo many times because the beaches allow dogs there, whereas in New Jersey, not so much. She also loved that there, the waves broke further out so she could paddle out to her toy and body surf back in before diving headfirst into the sand just to shake it off in my car later. 
Her favorite spot though was the sound, where it was only knee deep for probably literally a mile, so she could play catch for hours there. And on a cooler day, we would hike all the way up the sand dunes and then run down them real fast. So many memories. Last October, 2018, I wanted to take her away because we couldn't swim in our lake all summer and I knew she'd miss that. So I drove her to seclusion and the ocean was exceptionally warm, like prime of hot summer warm and clearer than I've ever seen the Carolina coast get. We swam in the ocean and played with tennis balls as we watched the sunset. She kept me safe when I was scared and alone in that tropical storm wind when all the trees were loud against the house. She took countless nine hour drives with me through the middle of the night at scary rest stops. She heard me sing A Star Is Born about 250 times on that drive home and always comforted me sitting next to me, always to my left. On my last birthday, I took the day off to spend with her. My ideal day was spending it with her. So we walked in the woods, we went for another long walk outside, and we took pictures together. And it was the happiest day I had in a long time. Being her caregiver, we had our routine every morning and every night down pat. I had the luxury of working from home a lot over the years, so she was by my feet day and night. She took so many online courses right next to me. I always said she would be a genius in her next life. Although in all honesty, I wonder if she already was a person and graduated to become a kinder, loyal, patient soul, much better than humans, and got to enjoy the freedom of doghood. She was my guard dog. She laid outside the door as I showered every day. In 2012, when she was three, tragedy struck my family. When my mom got sick and I was in the hospital, she would say to me every single night, go home to Lily. Lily got me through the helpless nights. And when my mom, Pat, passed away, Lily got me through the grief and the numbness that followed where nothing in the world mattered anymore. And I didn't know how I'd continue to go on. And when friends stop checking in on you and you're alone in a hole of silence and void, and when people expect you to go back to life as normal, Lily was there. Going back to work after that was very hard on me. Lily became my emotional support dog. All those years earlier, I rescued her from being homeless and roaming the streets as a stray with no food and told her I'd take her in forever and never leave her. And she never left me. She ended up rescuing me. Soon after I lost my mom was when I started to prep for my fitness competitions. Lily was with me through all the meal prep and would lie next to me while I worked on my goal. I was also taking a master's course and my boss sprung a new job duty on me. So I had too much on my plate, but I had already committed to my prep, which requires your all mentally and physically without the added brain focus needed for the studying and the job role change. And Lily and I had the best evenings together after the gym. She also would train with me at home at night after work for a while too. Our Saturdays and Sundays were our absolute favorite days for adventures and car rides and hikes and errand running. She laid by me as I studied every entrepreneurial endeavor throughout the last few years and the few months in the beginning of this year. She was like my business partner in some regard. I'll post a photo of her with my very first private label product sample, which we opened together in my kitchen. I was quite sick for a few weeks earlier this year and Lily laid with me day after day when I was in bed healing. Lily got sick and I made it my mission to do all I could to find the best options for her to heal. She fully healed for two months thanks to holistic methods that helped her enjoy two months of hikes and love. Lily was priceless to me and I did all I could for her. I'm so happy I got to be with her on her last day and I was the last thing she saw. Just a month and a half shy of her 11th birthday, I'm so blessed she was by my side for the 10 and a half years of adventures we shared together. Lily was like my child and I'm expected to go on like normal just because it didn't happen today. Many people are close with their dogs but most also have a spouse or children. And a lot of people who experience a loss say things like, I couldn't have gotten through it without X. What would I do without Y? Or thank God my children are a pleasant distraction from the pain. It was just me and my Lily. Us versus the world. The only one who relied on me was Lily. The thing I looked forward to when leaving the office at night was going home to Lily. And each Saturday I got to hang with my Lily. After she became my unofficial therapy dog, I truly needed her. We were there for each other. Lily was my sole dog. She was made for me to have her and she made sure I chose her on November 8th, 2008. 
In three days, it will be November 8th. It would have been her 11th gotcha day, her adoption day. And Friday will be three months since we last looked into each other's eyes. It doesn't matter if she couldn't speak English. She meant as much, if not more, to me than a human. And lying in bed each night and waking up each morning is so tough. Pulling into the driveway to our house is incredibly tough. Walking in the front door and not seeing her is gut-wrenching every single day. But I keep thanking God for giving her to me. I'm so lucky I was given her because she taught me about patience. She taught me to have trust, have faith, and be present. There will never be a bond like I had with my girl. I'm trying my best to for real smile again because hiding your truth is quite exhausting, but between losing both my girls, my mom Pat and my Lily girl, I've done it so much it's almost too normal. And soon I'm going to travel to find me again. I'm still grieving the loss of my Lily, so I took time off since my last episode in February while putting all my time into preparing her foods and caring for her and enjoying the time I had with her and mourning life without her since May 9th. I hope you understand the time I needed to take. If you heard my first three episodes where I explain why I chose to create a podcast, you will have heard more about this. After Pat had to go, I truly believe she and God led me to this path of my purpose of sharing my knowledge and experience of wellness, which encompasses many forms with old friends, new friends, with you. That will in turn lead you to also creating a legacy and living a balanced, fulfilling life while doing so. The changes I made after Pat led me to feel so amazing. I didn't know I could feel that good, and I started to share it. Lately, I had put my desires of helping others on the back burner, and I felt discouraged after not feeling in shape enough or happy enough to share what had helped me. After Lily had to go, I decided to add what I learned from her holistic healings to the information I've been putting together to share with you. I decided to include more wellness options into my nutrition-based course I'm creating. Lily lied at my feet as I worked away, both at my desk upstairs and at the table downstairs when we no longer could do stairs. And I'm preparing this all-inclusive course, starting with meal prep tips that not only got me into the healthy lifestyle I live now, but through the extreme actions needed to, to complete three bodybuilding competition preps, then maintain a less intense yet smart balance in normal everyday life, and also vulnerably sharing it got me through two years of excluding exercise from my life due to an injury, and then through life's crisis, such as the death of a loved one. I'm sharing the strategy that has worked for me. Lily has propelled me to work faster to bring you what I've always wanted and then even more. This online course is designed to help busy women achieve healthier eating habits with a streamlined meal prep strategy that saves you time to free up your evenings to spend doing anything other than working hard in the kitchen. It worked for me and I'm breaking it down for you and have created the Fit Nomad community so we can learn together. If you would like to gain energy to put back into the people and things you love and have more free time to catch up on all of the things, you can join the waitlist for now to be the first to know when the Fit Nomad course is released by going to erinrow.com and sign up for the waitlist to be notified. I am back to bringing you a new episode every Tuesday. Please leave me a rating. That really helps me to know if you'd like me to continue editing and hear more episodes and share your thoughts in the review section so I know which episode topics you enjoy. I appreciate your understanding of my absence. Go to Erin Rowe now so you don't forget if you'd like to be put on the waiting list to hear about all that I've been working on. Thanks for listening to my story of Miss Lily. Thank you for listening. You can find every episode, including the written versions to read on ErinRowe.com. Be sure to leave a review because I love hearing your opinions on the topics I shared. Are they new? Are they helpful for you? Tap that subscribe button so you don't miss the future interviews and enlightenment to come. This episode was brought to you by me and only me because I love sharing new ideas with you. Take action to become better. Have a fabulous day.